In my last video, I told you about this little fish. And this video is going to be about setting up a brand new tank for it specifically so it can stay nice and safe and grow larger. And eventually, when it's big enough, it'll go into my 400 gallon reef. This is a Japanese pygmy angelfish called Centropage interruptus, or C. interruptus for short. As I mentioned previously, my intention was to release this straight into my tank, but then I got nervous because it's so small. It's about an inch in length. So instead, I followed some advice from a friend and I set up a brand new tank. So I thought this would be the perfect time to do a video showing the setting up of a brand new tank and going through the cycle. I'm going to take you through it step by step over the past three weeks and that way you can see what it's like to set up a tank and see if it's something you'd like to do yourself. However, I do need to warn you that I'm setting this tank up differently than I would a normal reef tank. Usually I end up setting it up with all kinds of gear, but I wanted this tank to be super simple, minimal equipment. The only thing it's going to have for filtration is going to be a water change, which will be performed once every week or two. On May 25th is when I got this fish and I put it in the Peacemaker and then I got in my truck and I drove straight to Frank's tanks and said, I need a new aquarium. We discussed my options and I told him I needed it tomorrow, which is gonna be May 26th. And on the 26th, he called me up and said, your tank is ready to be picked up. This is a Marineland 27 gallon aquarium. It's 20 inches by 18 inches by 20 inches tall. And it came with a wooden stand. This is a simple aquarium, no holes drilled in it, not reef ready. It's gonna hold some live rock and a fish or two or three. I also got a bag of live sand while I was there because I love to start a tank with fresh live sand. I also love to use live rock. So I ordered a box and that arrived the same day as the tank. I unboxed the aquarium stand. I needed to make sure it was in good shape. Then I went ahead and put it in location where it was gonna be and put the aquarium on top of it. The next step would be to clean the aquarium. So I mix up some vinegar and water and I wipe down all the walls inside the aquarium. And then it was clean. It looked great. <laughs> and it's in a good spot. I actually like it there. As you can see, the inside of the tank was actually pretty dirty. So I'm glad that I cleaned it first. Also, the tank is tempered on the bottom, which means you do not want to drill any holes in it. Live sand is something that I've always recommended for an aquarium. I know some people debate it and say it's a ripoff, but I totally disagree. You can get this from your fish store. You can get it online. Yes, it's bagged sand and it has been in a warehouse. It ended up on a truck. It ended up in a fish store on a shelf. That doesn't mean it's not alive. And once you open up the bag and it mix it with salt water, it gets oxygenated and all of the bacteria that's in dormancy will suddenly hatch and it will become live sand. So it's not a ripoff. <laughs> And I've done this in many tanks where I end up seeing stuff all over the walls of the tank within a couple of days. These really pretty like white snowflakes. So yes, there's something in there. Check it out for yourselves if you want. You don't rinse live sand because you don't want to rinse away that bacteria. So you just open up the bag and you pour it in the tank. It's completely safe. There's nothing to fear. It's made for an aquarium. I chose to only use one bag for this aquarium. I might have used two but I'm fine with this. It's probably about a half an inch of substrate, maybe three quarters of an inch. And I am able to put the rock right on top of it. So what I'm doing here is I'm spreading it out. I discovered a little packet in there that was included in the sand and it was some kind of a water clarifier or something. I forget what it was actually, cause it was three weeks ago, but I read the little packet. It said, mix it with some water, wait five minutes and then pour it in the tank. So I'm gonna do that in a few minutes. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and smooth this all out and get it ready for the rock that's going in next. If I had used more sand, I might've put in some kind of a support system like, I don't know, PVC or acrylic to support the rock work, to lift it up so it can't shift when there's something burrowing in the sand bed. But in this situation, I'm not gonna to have to really worry about that because first of all, it's super shallow and the rock itself will be so close that how it could hardly shift. The live rock was shipped to me overnight. I ordered it the day before. I actually went to gulfliverock.com, read all the information on their website, called them up and said to them, listen, what I would really like is for you to find me some really nice rocks, put them in a box, tape it shut, ship it overnight so I have it the next day. That's what I'd like. And he said, well, I'm actually busy doing something right now, but I can get to you in a few hours and I'll get back with you with a picture of the rock I have available, which he did. And I said, great, and he shipped it. 
the next day it arrived that's what i'm unpacking right now so the rock was in a huge bag and then inside of it each rock was wrapped in wet paper towels and it's covered with life there's clams on there there's feather dusters there's i think there was a serpent starfish in there i saw sponges and there was more so this is exactly what i wanted and it's something that really interests me it really excites me and i highly recommend live rock to everyone for your aquariums when you receive live rock that's shipped to you when or if you're picking it up from the local fish store you definitely want to smell it to see if it smells clean like the ocean or if it smells rank like it's rotting if it smells clean like the ocean you're already ahead of the game but there will still be a mini cycle so if you can if you're picking it from the fish store bring a bucket with you buy the live rock tell them to cover the rock in water and bring it straight home and that way it stays submerged the entire time now shipping a box full of rock with water would be extremely expensive so shipping it damp is the better method but i can expect a cycle but i'm starting a brand new tank and a brand new tank needs to cycle so i don't even mind i'm kind of anticipating it now during the cycling process i get to look at what's happening on the rock i get to see the critters so there's all kinds of benefits and perks and could there be a pest in there yes Am I worried? No. What if I find some? I'll remove them. <laughs> it's really not something to be terrified of. Live rock will cost you more than dry rock. Absolutely. But at the same time, I find that the beneficial bacteria that's in the rock and the natural filtration that comes from the rock is a perk. And it's not to be understated. I'm not hating on the dry rock crowd. I get it. It's cheaper. <laughs> You can make a structure and bond it together before it ever gets wet and create some really cool shapes. But that's not what I want, and that's not what I have in my own aquariums. I set up my tanks with live rock, and then I let them go through the cycle, and then I put in my corals, and I just enjoy it. Now, this tank is going to be more minimalistic, and I'm still going to benefit from having live rock in there to help with the filtration of the water. I advise people that set up a tank with dry rock to be very slow going. Take your time, wait months, and I mean six to nine to 12 months until you can really count on that rock to be beneficial to the reef. Setting up a tank with live rock speeds that along and you're way ahead of the game months in advance. I don't anticipate a serious ugly phase to occur with this tank. Sand is in the tank, rock is in the tank, now it's time to add salt water. So what I chose to do, like I always do, is I put a vase in the aquarium first, and then I run hose into the vase and I pump in the salt water. Well, actually, I siphoned water out of my reef tank because it's right above this aquarium, and I let gravity drain it. So it's actually reef tank water that I'm using to get this tank started. As you can see, the water fills the vase and then it runs down the sides, and it will gradually fill in the aquarium without clouding up the water like crazy. I do need to come up with a better method of making sure that hose does not fall out of the big tank or flop out of the little tank if I'm gonna keep doing this on a regular basis. But I kinda like the idea of taking the water from the reef and putting it into this tank during each water change and then pumping new clean salt water into the reef itself. If you were setting up a similar tank and following what I'm doing up to this point, you would just use brand new salt water instead of water from another aquarium. The water from the other aquarium is not gonna help this tank do anything more special or make it cycle more quickly because there's no magic in the salt water. It's just good salt water that's in my reef and it's handy, so I'm using it. But actually, I only used it to fill the tank about halfway and then I filled the rest of the tank with brand new salt water because I didn't feel like draining 27 gallons out of my reef. I turned off the protein skimmer on the reef tank so that it could handle losing some of the water volume. And I also turned off the top off system so it wouldn't add more RODI water to it. I didn't want to change the salinity of the reef while I'm quote unquote borrowing water. It is important that if you're going to do anything with live rock to get it submerged underwater as quickly as you can. So this is pretty much this whole video segment right now has been in real time. I got that rock spread out and I put in the rock. I don't know how long did it take me, five, six minutes? And then I went ahead and started bringing water into the tank immediately. The rock can be exposed to air for a little while. Look, there's a starfish that came in as a hitchhiker. Cool! There's also some other neat stuff that's on there that I was discovering as I was looking at things for the next few days. I went ahead and added that stuff in the mystery packet. 
<laughs> I don't know if it did any good, but why not? It was included, I used it. The rock is nearly submerged fully at this point. I kind of did this thing in my head where I thought, okay, once I don't see any more rock exposed to air, I'll go ahead and stop using tank water and I'll start using brand new salt water from my big vat. The hose that I have on my water station is not long enough to reach this aquarium, so I used a smaller bucket. <laughs> it only holds two gallons at a time, which is better for me to lift anyway. It's better for my back. So I went ahead and I poured it, but I also aimed for the vase because in this case, I don't want to disturb the sand and I don't want to turn it into a cloudy mess. So I poured into the bucket after bucket into the vase until the tank was full. And you can see this works out really, really well. Now that the tank is full, the next step would be is to add something for circulation as well as a heater to maintain the temperature. I went ahead and put in some live rock enhanced because it's designed for brand new live rock that's been shipped or imported and it helps to kind of clean off any kind of decay that happened during transit. I also added a weighted air stone hooked up to an air pump to add some oxygenation to the tank and I think this is going to actually stay in the tank permanently. I like the idea. <laughs> Which I know, that's not like how you do a reef tank, but this isn't really a reef tank. It's just going to be a special tank. So the cycle has begun. 24 hours later, I had some ammonia. 48 hours later, I had much more ammonia. And I just kept watching it day by day to see how the cycle would progress. And as you can see, the green is already lessening. Here we are day five. And by day six, it's almost to the normal level. And then finally, day seven. The ammonia stage is complete. Now it's time for the nitrite stage. Also, I didn't mention, I installed a Nero 5 pump for circulation in the tank. So you've got oxygenation and you've got circulation. And that is going to work out really well because of the way I've got this tank planned out. Now, the airstone was creating all kinds of little bubbles. And so I put a piece of acrylic up there as a shield but the bubbles were just amassing water along the lip and then it was dripping down the side and I thought, okay, I need a piece of polycarbonate on there. So I went ahead and threw a piece on Minion and I cut out this shape and I made myself a little access door to put food in there with a little cute little lid so that way I can put my fish in there and not worry about them jumping out. Now, a lot of people like to have a screened top instead of a solid top, but because I have an air stone in there, putting air into the tank constantly, I can actually have the covered top. This will also lower the amount of evaporation that occurs with this aquarium. Now, I don't need this tank to be warm, so I'm not worried about heat issues. And the light I'm using is an LED fixture. It's the AI Prime. So I went ahead and I just thought about what I wanted to get, and I chose to get the black one that will fit over this tank because the stand is black and the trim is black, so it all kind of goes together. This is going to be my first time to use an AI Prime. I've known these lights have been around for a long time, but I didn't have a tank that needed one, but this is the perfect size light for this size aquarium, and even for a smaller one. The nice thing about it is that you can control it from your phone. You can buy a gooseneck arm to hold this onto the tank, which is what I needed, and it has a power supply and a long wire. And of course, the instructions are included to tell you to download the app and get started. I'm already using that app because I control the Nero 5 pumps with it. Right out of the box, it's looking for my Wi-Fi connection. I follow the directions in the app on my phone, which is super simple. I assigned it to the correct tank, which is Kate's Reef. <laughs> and there we go. Lights are on. It was so easy. It looks really good, too. But my polycarbonate top didn't have a notch for that arm fixture. So I had to take that off, put it back on the CNC machine to recut it. Now that I have more than just the lights in the room, I can actually see the live rock and we can take a look at some of the critters that are on there. One of the biggest things that caught my eye was that big red fleshy looking thing that's in the middle of the tank. I don't even know what it is, but it's definitely a filter feeder. I don't think it's a tuna kit. I don't think it's a sea squirt. I guess it's some kind of sponge. There was a couple of giant clams, but they didn't survive. And that's unfortunate. They were really cool looking. They might have been in the mussel family. I'm not positive. And then you've got these very delicate feather dusters. There's other colored sponges on here. There's some more tube worms on here. Uh, there's a type of algae called halamita, which is the money plant. And that one I, I really like because it's not invasive. The next day, I went ahead and notched out for that light fixture, like I said, and it looks much better. 
One thing I really appreciate is that it is completely silent. You just don't hear anything on that tank at all. And by day 13, the nitrite was zero. Perfect, it's ready for fish. So here's what it looks like in the room. You can see it next to the TV, next to the 400 gallon. And you know what, when I'm sitting, I'm not being blinded by light. I love that, I was concerned about that. I checked the nitrate and it was around 10-ish. So not surprising since I used some tank water from the reef, but that's it, it's ready for some livestock. Sunday, June 12th, and I put the walking dendro in here. And I put in the first fish. You have to look in the reflection to see it. It's hiding under that rock back there. That's a Randall Gobi. The walking dendro is a really cool creature. It's a coral that's dendrophilia with a peanut worm that lives inside the base and the worm pulls the coral around the tank as it seeks out food in the sand bed. Since last night, remember it started right here. The walking dendro went all the way over here and it went all the way over here. You can actually see the trail because there's nothing to disturb the sand besides this one creature. So that's kind of a cool effect to see the progress, even if I didn't actually watch it move. So the dendro as well as the fish are doing very well. I've watched them. They look completely healthy. There's no incident. There's no weird spike in the water. Everything is going perfectly. It is ready for the new fish. So I am ready to put the centripage interruptus into this tank. It, I was thinking, I think I'm going to do it on Friday. And that's exactly what happened. So one more look at the tank, just the way it is before I move this fish over. I put a filter on here because it was a little bluish. But, uh, you know, the rock looks great. And I'm lighting it four hours a day with light right now. I chose not to run a longer schedule initially. So, yes, I'm a little bit nervous. But I'm up there on the walkboard. In the upper right corner, you can see my hand. And my knee is on the walkboard. And I'm reaching in to remove the calerpa from the peacemaker so that I can just catch the fish with a net. And then I'm going to bring it over to the tank and put it in under that lid that I've got propped up because I didn't just take it off the tank for some silly reason. The fish cooperated beautifully and got right into the net, so there was no stress, and then within mere seconds, it was moved into the tank. The water from the reef as well as the new tank is the same, so I didn't have to worry about acclimating. Matter of fact, I had already done like a 10 gallon water change from the reef into this tank two hours earlier to make sure that the water was close as could be. What a nice sign to see the fish just swimming around and not just ducking into the rock work to vanish and hide. No, it actually wasn't afraid at all. And it seems quite comfortable and it's much larger <laughs> exhibit than what it's been in for the past three weeks. 21 days in a peacemaker, that is a personal record for me. I've never done that. Usually fish are in there for three days. But uh, in this case, that fish was too important to run, to run the risk of losing it. And I loved doing this. So why did I set up the separate tank? Why is it called Kate's Reef? Back in 2021, Kate said she wanted her own tank. She was gonna put in her fish and a few corals that she liked. And in February, she died. And so this is kind of to honor her. I wanted to set up a tank the way she would set it up. I know her well enough that she wouldn't want any fancy equipment. She would just wanna be able to change her water and clean the glass and feed her babies. So this tank, the filtration is going to be the live rock and some live sand. It's going to have the air stone for oxygen. It's going to have the pump for circulation. And then the weekly water change will be all that it's going to need. It's going to be simple. I'm thinking of putting in some frammer coral because she liked the hammer. And later on, when this fish is large enough to move into the reef, I'm going to go ahead and get her favorite, which is the lemon peel angelfish. And I'm going to get one from Biota because they're really, really small. And that way it won't outgrow this tank for a while. And it can be in there and it will be her fish. A couple more things have been ordered for this tank. One is a diffuser for the AI Prime because I noticed the condensation under the acrylic shield is creating like a magnification of the lighting. And it puts like a red dot and a green dot on the sand. I think the diffuser will help that evaporate and just vanish, which would be good. And then I ordered the new Hydros controller. I don't remember the model number, but you'll see it in a future video. And that way I can, main I can check the tank's temperature. I can keep track of the pH and it will handle top off 
as necessary. So that'll be really nice. And it's gonna be plugged into a battery backup as well because I wanna make sure that this tank also is protected in the case of a power outage. So now I have a new tank that I need to test the water on every Saturday, <laughs> in addition to the other tanks that I have to test. But that's okay. I'm really happy to have set up this tank and to set it up the right way. I took my time, I didn't rush it. The new fish is super happy in there. I'm looking forward to seeing it every single evening. Thanks for watching and I hope that you subscribe to this channel.